Greetings, friends of liberty. It has come to my attention that the noted evolutionary psychologist God Saad recently made a Prager video outlining his belief, which he had already presented many years ago in his book The Parasitic Mind, which I reviewed here, that woke ideas are a type of mind virus. Is this true? Can woke ideas accurately be described as a mind virus? Number one, their ubiquity. If woke ideas were a mind virus, then rightly or wrongly, there have been hundreds and likely thousands of mind viruses throughout history. In fact, every single ideology, or at least some variant of it, that ever existed. Communism, fascism, AOC environmentalism, vegetarianism, pacifism, Protestantism, Catholicism, Marxism, Hinduism, Jainism, Judaism, Anarchism, Nationalism, Progressivism, Leninism, Che Guevaraism, Maoism, Nativism, Postmodernism, Caesaropapism, Luddism, Antisemitism, Racism, Peronism, Islamofascism, Hardcore Feminism, Progressivism, and Imperialism, to name a few. Number two, viruses spread. Now it's true, as God implies, that viruses, once inside our bodies and past our immune systems, replicate themselves. And it's also true that all the above ideologies spread, either deliberately by persons who believe the ideology themselves, or insincerely by those who don't, but have some other ulterior motive. But, number three, Viruses work automatically on the body, which ideologies do not on the mind. Ideologies instead are accepted and replicated by human beings by a process of self-deception, generally either by evasion or rationalization. They're spread, often motivated by fear. None of these factors play a role in real viruses. In other words, viruses replicate themselves, but ideologies do not. Human beings replicate them. Maintaining sincere belief in ideologies actually takes constant work to convince oneself that the irrational is true. What could be more irrational, for example, than the belief in God for which no evidence exists? So Muslims engage in prayer five times a day because psychologically this reinforces their self-deception. Similarly, among most religions, schools of theology arise in order to rationalize away all the psychological difficulties since, again, no evidence exists for religious beliefs. Number four, the virulence of a virus. The virulence of any literal virus, in other words, how severely it can harm human beings, is properly understood as a relationship between the strength and type of the individual virus and the strength and type of the immune system and immune response of the host. A relationship. God, however, assumes or implies that the strength of the virus only depends on the virus itself intrinsically. So, for example, those who have HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, are much more likely, in the advanced stage of the illness, AIDS, to contract other illnesses, such as tuberculosis, pneumonia, salmonella, and Kaposi's sarcoma. But for persons who have healthy immune systems, these illnesses are much harder to acquire. God appears to assume and imply that whether a person is infected depends solely on the virus itself, due to its intrinsic strength. The reality, however, is just as described, very different. What God ignores is that societal and institutional factors have weakened American institutions, so their intellectual immune systems are much less resistant to woke ideas than previously. What has done this? The huge increase in the public funding and regulation of American colleges and universities since World War II, and especially the 60s, as well as the large exemptions from property and capital gains taxes for colleges such as Harvard with its resulting $50 billion endowment. This vast increase in public funding and tax exemptions have been used by higher education to fund massive amounts of DEI, CRT, and other types of woke professors, departments, 
courses, and ideas. In addition, the anti-discrimination laws of the Civil Rights Acts also play a role in that many aspects of the Civil Rights Acts of 1964 and 91, such as Title VII and IX, have long required adhering to proportional representation of minorities or women, often in both the student body and in the faculty, as well as in other institutions. Universities, afraid to lose their funding if they don't comply, thus become even more woke since A, they don't want to lose federal funding streams, B, don't want to get a bad public reputation, and C, thus eagerly comply, rationalizing their compliance in woke, self-righteous terms. And what happens to all the woke graduates they produce? They go into society and infect governmental, artistic, commercial, philanthropic, and scientific institutions with their wokeness. These above factors have thus highly reduced the institutional immunity of American colleges and universities to bad ideas since World War II. Being ignorant of economics, God attributes the strength of woke intrinsically to woke ideas, the so-called mind virus, instead of to the societal and institutional pressures which incentivize colleges to act in woke ways and to incubate and nurture woke ideas because of their weakened immune response. If woke ideas were mind virus, why didn't they infect earlier generations? Why? Because those earlier generations had healthy, more private colleges with robust intellectual immune systems, which never would have allowed the ideas of CRT and DEI into their departments in the first place. And they had no Title VII and IX, parts of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which incentivize HR departments to follow woke affirmative action quotas and establish woke company policies, all of which reinforce the power of woke. In conclusion, evolutionary biology can't even begin to explain woke. God's claim is largely inaccurate. He's right that literal viruses and woke ideas, like many ideologies, have spread widely. But number one, he's wrong in that woke ideas are not spread automatically, like viruses, but usually consciously and deliberately because, being an ideology, they involve a process of self-deception, which he never mentions. Number two, he's wrong in implying that the virulence of the virus is an intrinsic property of the virus itself, it being, instead, a relationship between the virus and the immune response of the host. And finally, number three, he completely ignores, not understanding economics, that the weakened intellectual immune response, so-called, the susceptibility of both individual human beings and institutions like colleges to the virus, depends on how much societal coercion, state funding of higher education and governmental anti-discrimination laws is used to threaten or reward the acceptance of woke beliefs. So, for example, probably less than 10% of people in the Roman Empire believed in the mind virus of Christianity before it became a state religion. It only spread on a massive scale to 90 plus percent of the population after people were motivated by state punishments and executions to accept Christian belief. Delighted to show the explanatory power of economics and cognitive psychology and the barrenness of evolutionary psychology when it attempts to step out of its lane, I bid you well and remain the Scarlet Pimpernel.